Today I'm going to be showing you how to replace a clutch master cylinder. Now this is going to be a vague video. This is going to be giving you an idea how to do it on all type of cars. Now there's going to be similar cars that are going to be different. Um, they're going to be tied in with the brake master cylinder. So your car won't have a, um, like a, like a tone reservoir. It'll, it'll be separate with the, with the master cylinder. So those will be mostly German cars. Now for this car, it's a Nissan pickup truck. Very simple, um, nothing too, too crazy. Very, like a, I mean, pretty walk in the park. Now before you do anything, um, make sure you have the proper tools, a few rags. Um, you don't want to get brake fluid on your paint itself. Um, brake fluid will deteriorate the, the, the paint very fast. Give it a couple days and then the paint will start peeling off and, and harm it. So make sure you have some rags and then wash it off. If you did not have any rags, make sure you wash it with uh, soap and water in that area wherever the brake fluid spilled. Or you can drain it from the slave cylinder in that part until it goes all out, but um, you'll be running the whole system dry. Either way, we're still gonna have to bleed the system. Um, and I will show you that. So you're gonna need some brake fluid, obviously the clutch master cylinder, um, probably about a couple tools, a pick, um, for whatever job you're gonna do, um, but again Make sure you follow the procedures that I'm doing um, same thing as you guys um, Like I said some steps might be a little bit different So I'm gonna go ahead and show you this one on this part um, But if anything give it a thumbs up comment down below if you have any questions on the video don't don't be ashamed don't feel um, There's no such thing as a dumb question if you're learning and hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future and we'll go ahead and start this video right after that intro. First things first, what we need to go ahead and do, we need to locate our master cylinder. Now there is two cylinders right here. Now the one we can determine which one's the master cylinder is going to be this guy right here. But um, one way we can determine which one is the brake cylinder um, is going to be this guy because it's attached to the brake booster. Now obviously older cars aren't going to have brake boosters, so you'd have to locate your pedal and tap on the pedal or the um, and see where where this guy will line up. But it's going to be the one all the way to the the farthest left on our end so we don't have the brake booster so this will be our master cylinder for the clutch system now next what we're going to go ahead and do we're going to go ahead and put a rag under here the fluid is obviously empty um the slave cylinder went bad but we're going to replace the whole system anyways um then we're going to go ahead and take off this bolt right here this is going to be a line for the the slave cylinder that's going to be a 10 millimeter on my end and then we have Two bolts now usually the bolts can be on the outside or on the inside and I will show you that we got one right there it's gonna be a 12 millimeter and one right down there too that's gonna be a 12 millimeter now while going inside the car there's gonna be three pedals obviously it's gonna be the gas the brake and the clutch so we're gonna go ahead and look to the one all the way to the clutch if I can get this recorded so right here this is your clutch pedal so again, some of the bolts can be right here on this side, on the inner side. Those ones are the pain in the butt. I forgot which car I did that. So right here, they're usually about uh, a safety pin. Now right there we have a cotter pin that's right in there. We're gonna go ahead and pull that out with the pick. All right, so I'm gonna be using a pick to take out this. You can get these at your local Harbor Freight stores. So as you can see, just like that, we'll just pop this guy out, set that off. To the side and then we're gonna go ahead and pop out that pin that's right there so we'll just use our hands and it's just slide right out and just like that there's these two doesn't matter which way you put it back in but if you put it in the easiest way you can um, some vehicles actually only go in a, a certain way so as you can see right there we're loose on this end so now we're gonna go up to the front all right, so now we're gonna go ahead and bleed the master cylinder. Make sure there's no um, pins or anything. So this one I might have to do by hand by just kind of pumping it back and forth. So right here, we're gonna go ahead and pop off this, uh, this cap. It's a dust cap, so we'll set that aside. Save that for the new one so we can put this on the new one so it doesn't leak fluid. 
And then we're going to go ahead and get some hoses. And basically what these hoses are, that this will help us re-bleed the system. I had this from an old job. Um, AutoZone does sell like a little kit set. A little, it's like a brake bleed kit set. Um, just so you can do the um, um, bench bleed. This one, um, there's no special fittings in it. You'll just stick it in the hole. And then it'll be one of those that it's, it's kind of like push in to fit. So... As you can see, it's kind of a little bit, not pulling too much with force, but, you know, just push, push in with some kind of force. And then we'll go ahead and pull off the cap. And then we'll set this right here inside, right all the way at the bottom. And then we're going to go ahead and add brake fluid in here. All right, so here's the brake fluid. Need to make sure it's new and all that. Um, you don't need this much. This is from other jobs. Now... We'll go ahead and hold this right in here. All right, so I'm gonna have this, um, I have this little tool, this is just to help me out, but you can actually do this with one hand, um, just to hold it in place and then use this guy to pump it. But just for a demonstration, I wanted to show. So make sure that this hose is all the way at the bottom so that when all the air starts surfacing from the master cylinder, that it could go up to the top so you don't suck it back in. So the whole purpose to bleeding this guy is to make sure you get all the air pocket out before installing inside the system. Because if you you can install it like this, but it will take a long time to bleed the system. So we're gonna go ahead and add our brake fluid. So we'll go ahead and top it off pretty much all the way right there as you can see. So right there, we're going to go ahead and pump this slow. If you do it fast, you will cause too much bubbles and which will take longer in the bleeding process. So we'll go ahead and pump it up. And then right there, you can see all those bubbles. Remember, do this slow. And you see all those bubbles right there? So I like to hold this guy just like this until about maybe like five, 10 seconds until the, the bubbles surface up. So we're gonna keep repeating this process until there's no more bubbles. And then once I'm done with that, we'll go ahead and get ready and back to the install. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and loosen, loosen you have to loosen up the bolts, make sure that these are loosened, but don't take them off all the way because we need to loosen this bolt. So, um, anytime when you're loosening this guy, obviously it's lefty loosey, but these guys tend to strip a lot. Make sure that you're using the right wrench for this. Mine's a 10 millimeter. So as you can see, mine's not stripped. Um, and I can loosen the bolt. Now there is sometimes where these guys are really stuck on there really, really tight and you'll have a pain in the butt. Um, now if this does strip on you, you can get some Irwin vice grips. Now you need to make sure it's the, the flat one. Not, you have to make sure it doesn't have like a little, like a little um, indentation in the middle of it. You need to make sure it's completely flat so when you clamp it down, you can loosen it. Um, so you can do that. So we're gonna go ahead and take this off. Don't forget to have your, your rag. So we'll just loosen up this bolt right here. And then we're gonna go ahead and take off those two 12 millimeters because we want to do this in and out as fast as possible without making a mess. So I did spill a little bit. I am gonna have to wash that out. Um, doesn't have to be right away. I will clean it up in about as soon as I'm done with this job. Now the next thing, um, remember how when you take this guy off, you need to measure that with the new one. So we're gonna go ahead and measure this one with the new one. We'll go ahead and line up those, we'll count the teeth and we'll go ahead and do that. Make sure you count your rod, the distance of the rod as versus the old one. If you need to get it to the exact measurement, if not, um, you might have to adjust it while it's on the car. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and do the install. But before I do that, I need to make the adjustment. 
and then we'll finish the tightening the rest of the tightening in the car so we'll go ahead and slide this guy right in make sure we get it in its hole and then I like to put this guy on first just because um, it's more easier to bolt this on when it's loose So we'll just snug that right in. See how pretty much the rag caught everything. And again, we'll clean up all of that once we're done. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put this right in. Now we're not gonna fully bolt this guy in. We're just gonna do a snug fit just because we wanna make sure that it lined up with the pedal itself. So as you can see right there, it's, it's pretty off. So what we can do is right now, we can actually push this in because this is not that hard or pull down and then push right up. So we'll just leave that guy right there and then we'll go ahead and finish everything up in the front. Put everything tightened, tighten back on this line, put in both 12 millimeters, tighten that. Again, don't forget, I'm gonna clean this right up. And then we're gonna go back inside the car and finish the rest. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and put back on our pan. I'm gonna go ahead and put it on from the ins from the outside, or yeah, from the outside to the inside. So, go ahead and pop this guy right in. Now, since we have this in just like that, we're gonna go ahead and play with the, the pedal. There should be like slight little play. And if there isn't, you can actually turn your knob, the rod itself. So back this guy right up, right there. And then you'll just tighten this nut that's on the back that will lock it in place. You'll use a, an adjustable wrench. The little mini ones actually work out pretty well in this situation for a 12 millimeter. And then we're gonna go ahead and pop back on the cotter pin. All right, so after we're done, we're gonna go ahead and pump up the pedal. As you can see, it doesn't come right up. So we'll just give it a few pumps. Let's do this by hand. So, I'm gonna keep pumping it all the way down. So after you pumped it maybe about like 30 to 50 times, um, you're gonna build enough pressure. Make sure you, um, on that time, make sure that you're holding it and then you hold it with your foot and then someone goes under the car to bleed it. So I'm gonna have someone help me pump up the brakes and then I'm gonna go under the car to release the pressure. All right, so after they're done pumping it for about the 30 times again, 30 to 50 times, let's just say, make sure that they press and hold it so when you release the pressure, this little valve, and you close it right back up, then they can go ahead and start pumping again, because we don't want, as soon as they let go, it's gonna suck in back air. So I'm gonna have a little catch can to catch the fluid. So I'll put that right there. And then we're gonna go ahead and release the bleeder valve. Make sure that they're holding it. So you, you can see that fluid that just came out. And then we'll go ahead and close it right back up. And then have them pump it. And then you're gonna keep an eye on this guy right here. Go ahead and pump it. And then you wanna make sure you're paying attention to this guy to make sure it starts moving. So as you can see, it start it's starting to move. It's gonna 
push a little bit more farther than that. Okay, hold it. Okay, pump it. As you can see, there's these little air pockets right there. So we're getting rid of all of those little air pockets in the line. Okay, hold it. Okay, pump it. So we're going to go ahead and release the fluid. This is the last time I'm going to be releasing it. So go ahead and pump it, and then you're going to watch this guy travel. So when, when you go ahead and release this too, I forgot to mention um, that this guy, the pedal, you're going to lose pressure for the first initial start, and then you got to repump it again until it starts bit, building more pressure. As most of the air is gone, or all the air is gone, the fluid cannot be compressed, so it'll build pressure. Um, air can be compressed but the fluid cannot. So go ahead and pump it. And then you're gonna see how this travels. So you want it to travel about almost half an inch to an inch of travel time. And so right here, this is actually pretty good. So we're golden on that. And I mean, we're pretty much good on that. So after you're done bleeding the clutch, what you're gonna go ahead and do, you're gonna go ahead and open this guy up and then top it off with fluid. So I'm gonna finish topping that off with fluid. All right, so after you're done doing the clutch bleed, what you're gonna go ahead and do is top off the fluid as needed to the max line. And after you're done with that, you can go on your way. Um, if this video helped you out, give it a thumbs up, comment down below, if, again, if you have any questions in regarding this. And then hit that subscribe button for more upcoming videos in the future, and thanks for watching.